Power Radio presents Art as Worship with Vanessa Lowry. Welcome to Art as Worship. Each week we feature stories of artists and explore their process of creation. I'm your host, Vanessa Lowry. Today we're airing an encore of an interview with Antour artist Patricia Hayes from 2012. Patricia and I, along with 23 other co-authors, just published a collaborative book titled The 28-Day Thought Diet. We have 12 to 70,000 thoughts each day. For the majority of people, up to 80% of these thoughts are negative. With failed New Year's resolutions, the percentage of negative thoughts may be even higher. The 28-Day Thought Diet encourages readers to choose thoughts that grow their life in a more fulfilling and joyful way. The book is available on Amazon and many of the co-authors' websites. I'm thankful that you're joining me for today's show. Welcome, Patricia. Uh, Good morning, Vanessa. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, You know, I'm not even sure if I'm saying Intura Art the correct way. Is that the way you You pronounce that? That's absolutely correct. Oh, that's wonderful. (laughs) You know, I would like for you to tell us a little bit more about... Go ahead. Go ahead. (laughs) I I was just going to ask you to tell us a little bit more about this medium of Intura Art and, you know, how you developed that. Yeah, well, I, w- I was going to tell you that you couldn't have had this show at a more important time oh, thank in you. Uh, in history, basically, because uh, man is on a rise. The consciousness is expanding, and creativity is one of the most important things. So congratulations for your timing. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. You know, I, I definitely feel like I've been led to do it at this time, so... Um, yes, I, definitely. I, that's wonderful. Thank you for that affirmation. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, uh, I call the art Intura art, and it's something that I founded over 40 years ago. Back then, it was way ahead of its time, but now it's a perfect example of the dramatic change that all of us artists are presently uh, experiencing. It seems like in the last 10 years, um, there's been a widespread popularity and interest in the arts. And I believe that the awareness of energy and the Internet have helped bring art into the reach of everyone. Don't you agree with that? Oh, I absolutely think so. And I think that there's um, so many wonderful teachers like you out there that are, you know, teaching people to be more comfortable with themselves as artists. Yeah, exactly, because in the past, um, art was basically uh, purely solid and material and very rigidly realistic in form. And our exposure to art was kind of limited to sculptures, buildings, temples, you know, landscapes, and, of course, abstract art, which is really a forerunner of today. So um, the new art that's emerging... uh, The emphasis has gone from an object being revealed to exactly what you said, a creation, an experience of creation. So that's why I congratulated you. (laughs) When I create my art, I never know what I'm going to draw before I do. I am channeling an energy, and each energy is totally unique. And this kind of art... uh, It actually is easier to teach someone that has never uh, drawn anything than to teach an artist. Oh, really? Because an artist has been, yes, an artist has been trained. And so they are used to having a vision or a picture of what they're going to draw. And this, when you channel art, you are simply... uh, you're lifting to an altered state of consciousness, which is a meditative state. That's the easiest way to understand it. And what happens is you attune to that energy, whether it be an individual or a concept, and you actually channel that energy onto paper through color and motion. And interestingly enough, color communicates both light and energy very well. And it has a what I call an emotional resonance that's metaphysical. So Intura means entering the energy field. So if I were to do you, I would lift up into a higher state of consciousness, and then I would begin to tune in with your heart because that's where we keep everything precious to us, <laughs> whether it is our dreams, our visions, our goals, or our deepest problems and concerns. So you will, you will be able to 
channel a, a, a true a, a true picture of that person's energies, their soul, their spirit, their physical life, their past, their present, and their future. So when so you do the... You can stay, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing process, and as I said, you never know what it's going to look like before you're through. I would say before the last maybe, oh, maybe 15, 20 minutes. So when you, when you do into our art, are you typically working with another person and and channeling their energy into the art? No. I, what I do is I either work from a photograph. I'm, com, I'm commissioned to do uh, soul portraits for individuals. And uh, if I know them or if I'm around them, that's easy because I know them. But if I don't, which is the majority of my work, I attune to them with their photograph. And you have to remember, <clears throat> I've been... I've been teaching channeling for oh, over, oh, well, since 1974, so how's that? Wow, wow. <laughs> We've, I started the uh, university in Miami back then, and uh, I've been doing it ever since. But I haven't been doing my art that long, and a little bit later we'll get into, you know, how I got into that. But, uh, yeah, Intura Art is a very unique, uh, very unique kind of art, and it is wonderful, uh, when a person sees that they can create something beautiful, uh, and they they look at it, and it makes it makes us feel so good to know that that we can do that, you know. <laughs> well, and when when you teach people to do this process of intour art, do, do most people sit down and do uh, an entire um, painting or an entire drawing at in one setting? Is that is that the way that typically yeah, works? Yes, they, yes, they do. It it. Um, well, let me talk about that a little bit later as we get along, because uh, okay. it is a process that you learn, and the more you do it, the better it gets. Okay. Well, I'm curious, because um, obviously from your bio, you've done lots of, lots of things during your career, and you've been a businesswoman starting several businesses, and you've been an author, and you've been an artist, and you've been a teacher and a lecturer. At what point in your life did you start thinking of yourself as an artist? Well... It took several years for that to happen after the Intura art uh, came in, and and it really um, happened as a result of my spirituality. Uh, my spirituality has always been extremely important to me. It's it's uh, I have always uh, meditated, which means I have gone up. And can I explain meditation because there's so many different kinds? Absolutely, please. Uh, a, a lot of people when they meditate, they simply uh, slow their mind down and and get rid of every thought and that is the process of meditation coming to a a mindless state you might say where you can experience pure being and uh, i've done that but i have found myself that i'm an explorer and i love the unknown so when i meditate i lift up into a higher state of consciousness and i explore I go to different uh, dimensions, you might say. And I've been doing this for years. So uh, uh, my spirituality is not typical in that sense. <laughs> I, I went to a convent <laughs> for six years when I was in first to uh, sixth grade because we lived in the country outside in the North Hills of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we were not Catholic. But it was the only school that wasn't a trade school. Oh, wow. So I, I learned to meditate because every morning there was mass, and they wouldn't allow me to have any participation in it because I wasn't a Catholic. So I, <laughs> I had a quiet time for a long time. And I guess I just naturally picked it up and uh, just started what I call communing with God. So then uh, then as I got older, I tried every religion, as we always do, <laughs> looking for something that fit me. And I really never found one, but what I did find was the mystical. And I would, I would have to say that my spirituality is a mystical approach. Uh, I feel that, that life is a spiraling phenomena that is caused and experienced and guided by all of us, our own expanding consciousness. And I feel that there's one infinite divine consciousness underlying all reality. And like you, 
It doesn't matter to me what we call it, whether it be God, Mother, Father, God, Creator. Uh, I love the sea, the blissful sea of divine energy. And personally, I love the word God. So uh, <laughs> uh, that's that's kind of my background. And, and I think it's such such a gift that you, you know, at such an early age, you learn to kind of commune with that energy of God, even though you were um, calling it some different things when you were from first to sixth grade. What a great yes, gift if we yeah. could teach all our children to do that. <laughs> well, I have. Really? <laughs> I did when they were growing up. And uh, as a result of that, they're all involved in our Delphi University in one way or another. My son's a builder. He built the buildings. Uh, my two daughters, uh, actually, one is a teacher and one uh, does the organizational skills. So, yeah, uh, it, it's been a relationship. And, you know, when you asked me... Uh, to be on this show, Art as Worship, I had to think and feel what worship meant to me. And the closest word I feel is devotion. Uh, we, we are devoted and worship the things we value. Don't you agree? Oh, I do. I, and I think that that's such a lovely word. I hadn't really thought of that word in conjunction with the show, but I, I, I definitely agree. Yeah, and what matters uh, is the value that we place on God or Creator or whatever we else want to call it. And I do. It's extremely important. And uh, my husband does, too. And and this is beautiful to have met somebody that that is totally uh, in sync and in harmony with your uh, values. So to me, devotion is a longing. It's a longing to be with. And uh, it's, that's probably the best way I could describe it. We, what we value the most is what we want to have an intimate relationship with. And I've enjoyed many years of an intimate relationship with spirit. So, you know, we've all known people that worship money, right? Right. And some people that worship money... Uh, are wonderful. They're, I mean, they, they share what they have. But then there's others that uh, that's their whole life. And it, they're dedicated to work or whatever they have to do to acquire it. And I really believe that this is the cause of greed in our world today. It's not that they worship greed, because they don't. But they are dedicated to money, and that causes greed. So greed's kind of a negative thing that says I want the most. Well, and don't so you think what that you worship? <laughs> yeah, what you worship in life and what you value in life does matter because right. we all matter. Uh, every one of us are creating this world. Every single one of us matters, and that, I think that's the biggest thing that people are awakening to. I matter. How could I, just a little me, matter? But we do because we all collectively are changing the world constantly all the time. Well, and I agree. And I, you know, to me, one of the things that I think is coming out of um, our country and our world really going through such an economic um, turmoil over the last few years is it's helping people look for other things to fill them up than the, yes. than the money that, that's been in the past and the things that have been in the past and the commercialism that exactly. has been in the past. So exactly. that's wonderful that you're out there teaching them how to do that. You know, I'm, I'm curious yeah. how and this... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I keep yeah. interrupting you. I know you. what I was going to say is, yes, to have an intimate relationship, and that is a major, that's a major um, purpose of our teaching, is to do exactly what you said, to, to really get in touch with yourself and know you and who you are and what you value because that is what matters and that is what changes our world uh, we want to be part of the solutions rather than the problems right <laughs> right absolutely well and i love this so this we, way you're we talking want to not worry about being the best but rather giving our most and best and that's the difference in uh, that's the difference in the competitive world and feeling a purpose in what you do right right and and being the best is is unique to you, and it's not so much comparing it with everybody else. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and when you give your when you give your best, no matter what you do, <laughs> that is our purpose to to not want to not want to be better than everyone else. We want everybody to be better. <laughs> right, right. Well, and you've been talking about this intimate relationship, which I love that phraseology of connecting with spirit. Um, how has this intimate relationship and this evolution of your spirituality with that affected your art, and how has your art affected that intimate relationship? Uh, well, actually, they have had an intimate relationship, both of them. So uh, how I express my spirituality in my work is before I begin, I close my eyes and I attune with the sea, the blissful sea of divine energy, in, in my terms, God. And then I attune with the heart of the individual. And as I said before, we all keep the important things in our heart. Right. So uh, I am directly involved with channeling from spirit. So it's easy to say that I am in a spiritual state the whole time that I am drawing. And as I intuitively choose the colors, which I do, when I teach this, they uh, they have to learn it blindfolded. Because wow. we are so used to trying to do something. And uh, it gives them a freedom that they can't have if their eyes are open. Because our tendency is we have a, uh, when we lift into an energy, we sometimes see things. Uh, we, we see images and colors. And just because we're human, we try, for example, if we see a sun which really means that the person could have a sunny personality, all right? Right. Uh, but what they try to do is, if with their eyes open, they, they try to draw a sun. And that isn't channeling the energy. Uh, so that's the only way they can learn in the beginning. And that's why I said that uh, if they're not artists, they can do it more purely because they don't know what they're doing. And it has nothing to do with drawing a sun. That's not in Pura Art. It is purely channeling the energy. And the energy unfolds in form as you have enough color and motion down. Did that, did that help you understand it? It does. And it does. And I, um, I'm curious, when you teach a class... Is it over a course of several weeks, or is it a multi-week class, or is it, you know, just a few it's hours? It's actually a five-day class. Actually, they have two, a, a, a workshop one where they learn the basics, and then the workshop two, and the students stay for both of them, which is a period of eight days. And uh, the reason that it's important to do both is because after you learn the basics, now I want to I wanna be able to do enough that when I go home, I will continue. In other words, I have to have something of beauty in front of me. And it, and it seems like it might be easier if you did it in consecutive days than if you had it spread over multiple weeks. Oh, we do. We, oh, yes. It's intensive. Uh, everything we teach at Delphi is intensive because we found that if you do something intensive, then you can learn. At home, we never do anything long enough to really begin to develop it to get good enough to continue. You, you know what I mean? Right, right. So so, uh, so when people come anyway, for the classes, um, they actually come and stay on site at Delphi University. and Oh, yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, let me go back to my spirituality and, and, and what I love is okay. I love nature. But, you know, I've never drawn. And... In my whole life, I've never drawn because I can't even draw a stick figure. I just (laughs) didn't have that perception that you need. Uh And I was never interested because I could never draw a tree as beautiful as one is, or a river, or a field of flowers. So I'm just not a traditional artist. But, but, you know, you can't be all things. I've always loved the unknown. So the mystical is my subject and that keeps me moving and it keeps me growing and it keeps me expanding and the interesting thing is that back in uh, when was it my first picture that I drew I woke up in the middle of the night and it was two or three o'clock I can't remember exactly and I had the most intense 
feeling a love of God, I could not even believe it. It filled up the whole room. And I, I wasn't aware of any dream that I was having. Right. And I just sat there probably for a good hour uh, in this total bliss. And it was amazing. So the next day, I just went and got anything I could find. And, you know, tubes were inhibited. They just uh, were too big for me to perceive. So I got some chalks. <laughs> uh-huh. And I... I transferred that feeling onto paper and one of those is the drawing that I sent you the very first one and that was the beginning of Ventura Art because I knew how to enter an energy field and I knew how to channel energy so that part wasn't new at all but the drawing was holding the chalk and uh, that is that uh, woman that with the wings that is up in the air I love that one that when I looked at him that was my absolute favorite I thought that I just could yeah. feel the energy of that. That What a great gift well, to hear the story behind it. Yes, and what's so interesting is that was pure. I didn't know what I was doing. In other words, I truly channeled because, I mean, without any... Uh, you see, sometimes we block the flow just through our own inhibitions. And that was just pure. I had no idea what I was doing. Well, the second one that I did didn't look like that at all. The first, I would say, 10 looked like a kindergartner. (laughs) And so when I did it again, it was very discouraging after that. But that was to show me what can be done. That's why that one happened. And, you know, I've always had, I still have it in my home. I just love that picture. So was (laughs) it hard for you to, when you had those experiences after that first one that you were found disappointing, was it hard to then continue to do this kind of art when you weren't? Well, you know, I find that we always have little urges to to carry us uh, when we need them. And, uh, you know, I, no, I love to draw. I love the color, and it was kind of messy, and uh, I liked that. I didn't have to be concerned about being staying in lines and doing things like that. It wasn't a mental process. It was a feeling process. So it, I, I continued to do it until uh, <laughs> it was interesting. Uh, my mom died in 1977, and we were extremely close. She was there when... I had all my children, and we, we just did everything together. She carried a couple of them on her hips. I had five children. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we'd go shopping together. And uh, uh, I was drawing, and a person that I knew, and this is back when I lived in Miami, a person, we had the Arthur Ford Institute in Miami, and uh, he was a very well-known medium that I worked for back in the 70s. And... Anyway, um, he, uh, what was I saying? I can't even remember. You were talking about your mom. About. You were talking about that you were really close with your mom. and. Oh, right. I wanted to tell you about the experience. So anyway, uh, a, a spiritual intuitive gave me a message after my mother died. And, you know, I wasn't looking for it. She just was in the audience one time when I was speaking, and she said, your mother says, look for the girl with the sun bonnet. Well, I didn't think anything more about that. And, uh, oh, I would say a month later, we went uh, over to the other coast, uh, to Naples, right. to take the kids to the beach. And uh, I take my talks with me everywhere I go. <laughs> it's just something I do. And I was uh, drawing one night after the kids went to bed, and I was sitting there, and I did finish the picture and left it there, and the next morning, I went back and looked at it, and it was a perfect girl with a sunbonnet. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yes, and to me, that was my mom, because she was so close. In fact, she was so close that before she died, we meditated to see where she was going, and uh, so we would always be able to communicate with each other, and back to this, she died in 77, and she comes in often, usually now only when something is important she wants me to know. So uh, anyway, that encouraged me just at the right time when I needed to continue. And of course I did, and it, I am in love with this kind of art. It's, <laughs> if I could be addicted, I would be addicted <laughs> to it. And <laughs> meaning that uh, <clears throat> it's so enjoyable, it's therapeutic. 
So how did you, at what point did you decide to start teaching this art to, to other people so that they could tune into um, the Intour art? Well, it's only been in the last five years. Wow. Because the reason is because I was so busy teaching the Rohan therapy and the channeling process, and I didn't have time. Now my girls, uh, are, they do so much for me uh, at the university. I have the time that I can teach it, and of all the things I do, that is my favorite. So this is the one thing that I continue to teach right now is the art. So it's my joy. And uh, when, you see, uh, when you see aspiring artists a little nervous uh, and, and hoping that they can produce, that the whole first part is to relax them so that they can just have fun and then it happens. So it's pretty great when you can do something that you can just have fun and it turns out good, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> so how often, <laughs> how often do you teach into your art um, throughout the year? Only once a year. Only once a year. So when's Only the next time year. coming up? It's uh, in May. And where do you teach it? I teach it at Delphi. Okay. And how- at University in McKaysville, Georgia. So tell people how they can find out more about Delphi. Delphi, uh, the best way is to go to the website, and you can look at everything. It's um, www.delphi, D-E-L-P-H-I-U, a U at the end, dot com. So it's Delphi U, and that's one word, dot com. <clears throat> so how many people and can... And I've written an article in the journal this month that's in there. And they can scan the whole website and, and see the, uh, uh, just about see anything on there. And I also have a website myself that is, uh, uh, <laughs> one of the questions that you said you might ask me is, right. how do I connect the two, my spirituality and my art? Right. Well, uh, the last book that I wrote was Prince Abba and Magi Pataput, which is a story about a, and this is channeled, by the way, uh, my books are channeled. This is a story about a young man that was imprisoned from the age of three till 23. And then he goes out in the world and knows nothing, and he's longed to be out in the world. And he's out there for two days and wants to, wants to get away from people. Right. <laughs> The reason he was imprisoned was for his spiritual gifts. The person wanted to use them as their own. And so uh, he, he was uh, basically abused for his gifts. And uh, he, he's out there, and people start clamoring and asking him, what can you tell me? What can you, you know? And all he wanted to do was run and hide. So he did. He went into the woods and found and found, finally, Magi Pataput, who was his spiritual teacher. And so the story is about all of the things that he learned. Well, there's a series of three books, and the first one is out, the second one I'm working on. And I came to a point in the story where I was stuck. You're a writer, so you know what a writer's block is? Right. Well, this was a writer's channel block, <laughs> meaning, <laughs> meaning that it was, a, it was a big concept trying to come through. Right. And I wasn't open to it like I needed to be. So I, you know, f- fussed around for a month and without putting a, a word on paper. And all of a sudden I thought, my goodness, what's wrong with me? <laughs> so I went in and started drawing. And the drawings told me exactly where I needed to go and what I needed to open my mind to to let the worst rest of the story flow. Wow. So to me, I, I, it was like golden. <laughs> That's powerful. So you use one, yeah, one type there, of art was, to open was, up the other type of art to let the flow happen. Exactly. It, it, it works together. And as I said, I've worked with this art uh, with blind people. I've worked with um, handicapped people, uh, mentally challenged people. And my favorite has been autistic people because they have so much inside them that needs to come out. And what a beautiful way to allow them to express and to enjoy their beauty right in front of them. Well, and that is really powerful so it, because they can't always speak what they're 
what they're trying to say. So that's wonderful that you give them a way to draw what they're trying to say. Exactly. <laughs> and it, it's, it's been, whether it be children that are autistic or adults, it doesn't really matter. So there's a lot of uh, what I call therapeutic. Every Everything I have taught uh, has to have a purpose or I... I just don't have the patience to do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, you've you've taught a lot of people how to help a lot of other people. So, um, I, how can people find your book if they want to read the, your other four uh, books or this um, latest fifth one? How would they find those? Yeah, it's www. Uh, Patricia Hayes Seven, and it's all lower caps, one word. Patricia Hayes Art. Just Patricia Hayes Art, not Patricia Hayes 7. That's my personal. Okay. Patricia Hayes Art dot com. Okay, so they can find the books there and they can yeah, contact the, yeah, you there. Yeah, they can find the books on the website. Okay. So, um, yeah. Is there... I've, I have this feeling that every single thing that happens to us is for a reason. And the more I remember my relationship with God, the more I know that everything I will ever know is within me. Because I live within God, and God lives within me. So I've come to know that we're all diamonds in the rough, so to speak, polishing our many facets. And there isn't anything that doesn't live within God, even the shadow teachers. And the shadow teachers are those hard knocks that we all experience uh, to, to help polish our diamond. And so they're all a part Everything negative in our world is actually a part. Now, it doesn't mean that we have to live with it, because once we understand something, we never have to repeat it. Well, that's that's encouraging. And, <laughs> yeah, well, that's only if you're aware, because right. some people will, you know, you touch a fire, you get burned, and some people will test it ten times. Right. And, you know, but I think spiritual awareness uh, changes and transforms your life beyond anything. And I don't mean religious awareness in that sense. I mean a deep feeling and connection within yourself to know that we are all one. We're many, but we are one, and, and we are all one in an infinite blissful sea of energy. And we have a connection with that sea. And this is our joy in life, to be able to feel that sense of belonging. And with religion, I've never found a religion that says, go inside, go right. within. And <laughs> so when I started exploring, uh, when I first began to awaken, uh, I found that, that the meditation was the best way for me to feel something. And to me, if I'm not feeling something, then I don't trust it. How about you? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, yeah. I think I, as I've um, gotten older, I've gotten better at that. I think for a while I believed it because, you know, people I, people I looked up to told me it was true. But, you know, as I've become an adult and really started to learn that, um, learning to trust myself, it's, it's an ongoing process for me. Yes, it certainly is. And you know something? It is your greatest accomplishment when you've achieved it, when you can truly trust yourself with anything, anywhere, anytime. And you can only do that from knowing yourself. So know thyself, as Socrates and Plato said. That's right. <laughs> is golden. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you so much. And I, I know we're running out, of, um, running out of our time here, and I just wonder if there's any last thing that you'd like to be sure and tell our listeners before we wrap up the show. Yeah, that's a good example of how we transcend time. I would have said it was five minutes. I know. It just flew right. by. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yes, it did. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> you did. You did. So it, can you tell us one more time how people can get a, get a hold of you, both with Delphi to find out about Intura and then to, to find out more about your books and your art? Okay. Uh, Patricia Hayes or www.patricia, P-A-T-R-I-C-I-A, H A Y E S art dot com. Perhaps you could put it on your website. And I will. Too. I'll send it to you. Okay. And then you will uh, can have it. And Delphi U D E L P H I U dot com. That's great. That's how they can get in touch with uh, what we do at the university and 
uh, the book. And uh, if they want to uh, email me personally, I can get that. You can just send it to Delphi, uh, or you can uh, Patricia Hayes 7. Well, no, that's too long. Okay. <laughs> you can give my email if you want, but uh, uh, but they can get I'd in touch with you through Delphi. From anybody, because I feel that I feel that anybody, w- w- when you ask me on, there's a reason. So anybody that is even interested in this kind of art or in in opening up themselves, uh, that's why I'm here. You know. Well, thank you so, so much. I, I really appreciate it. That was confirmation for me, you uh, asking me on this show, because uh, I've done so many interviews on TV, and and you are the first one that has asked me particularly for art. Thank you. And I love that, thank because you. this is the new age. You won't believe what's going to happen with art in the next 10 years. It is it is going to be an explosion of interest. Well, that just makes me tingle. I'm so excited about that. So thank you yeah. so much, Patricia, and thank you to our listeners. Um, I welcome your suggestions and your comments on this or any of our shows. And as Patricia said, she welcomes any questions you have for her as well. You can find links to all of our shows on Empower Radio and on our website, artasworship.net. Um, and I will be posting Uh, Patricia's contact information and all the links to the websites on artisworship.net. Please come and share your stories of art as worship on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash art as worship, or suggest an artist that we should interview. Listen in next week as we talk with another artist about their creative process and how it connects with their spiritual journey. May you have an inspired and creative week. Namaste. Namaste.